In this video, we'll cover how to use guides and snaps in Photoshop. These tools are extremely helpful for creating precise layouts in Photoshop quickly and easily. We'll focus on five different tools for guides and snapping. Those include rulers, the grid, snapping settings, guides, and smart guides. In Photoshop, I've opened the file marigolds.psd from this week's demo files. My goal in this file is to get these four separate layers arranged in a diagonal going from right to left. Now, of course, I could use the move tool and just click and drag and try to arrange them. Using the auto select and show transform controls in the status bar helps, but I really want this to be perfect and evenly spaced without having to guess. To help, let's turn on the rulers by clicking view rulers from the menu bar or hitting Control R on the keyboard in Windows or Command R in Mac. You'll see horizontal and vertical rulers with both starting at zero in the top left corner by default. The units shown match those set when the file was made. Right now they're in inches. I could switch by right clicking on the ruler. So with a 10 inch by 10 inch file, I can evenly space each of the four layers by setting them two inches apart in both dimensions. And I can just click and drag each to move it. Notice the markers on each side of the ruler that follow my mouse. These can help me to get a close layout, but there's another tool that's even better, the grid. We can activate it by clicking View, Show, Grid in the menu bar, or hitting Control quotation mark on the keyboard in Windows, or Command quotation mark on Mac. The grid shows a set of guides that cover the canvas. These aren't actually part of my image. They're just a preview that Photoshop shows for layout help. Notice these bold grid lines every inch and light grid lines every quarter inch between. I want these spaced every two inches, so I'll increase my grid spacing in Photoshop's preferences. On Mac, I'll click Photoshop Preferences in the menu bar. In Windows, I'd click Edit Preferences in the menu bar. Then click Guides, Grid, and Slices. The grid line setting gives me the bolder lines every inch, and the subdivision sets the lighter lines. I'd like a grid line every two inches with just one subdivision. Then I'll click OK. That gives me more spaced out grid lines that I can use to align my layers. We can take some of the guesswork out of grid alignments with snapping. Snapping helps with precise placement of layers, selections, and crops. I'll click View, Snap in the menu bar. Under Snap 2, I can see exactly what I'll snap on. I'll leave all those on the defaults for now. I notice with Snapping enabled that my layer jumps to those grid intersections when I click and drag. And I'll just zoom in a little bit to show that more closely. Looking at this design, I realize I actually want one layer at the very center, but I don't have a grid intersection there. That's where I could use a guide. Guides are like custom grid lines, and they don't actually become part of the image either. To set a guide, just click and drag from either ruler. As I do that, Photoshop displays a number next to my cursor. That's how far down the document this guide will be. Since I still have snapping enabled, I'll snap this right to the center at five inches. I can drag out additional guidelines, then use my move tool to click and drag them, or delete them by clicking and dragging back to the ruler. Additional guide controls are under the view menu. Here I could lock guides to prevent accidental changes, make new guides, or clear guides to remove them all. So now I can snap this layer right to the middle the others I'd like centered in those grid cells. But because of the way that I've set up my grid and snap settings, I'm actually snapping the edge of this layer to one side of the grid cell or another. Let's click View, Show, Grid to turn the grid off and use Smart Guides instead. These are dynamic layout and measurement guides that Photoshop displays as you're moving layers around. So back to that View Show menu, Let's click Smart Guides. 
These tend to be most useful with snapping enabled, so I'll make sure to leave that checked. Now as I click to drag a layer, you can see that I'm getting these pink highlights. Those are smart guides telling me that the bottom and left hand side of my moving layer are lining up with the top and right hand side of that centered layer. So I can use my layers relative to one another to do this alignment. Now I'm one short here. Let's duplicate that layer by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard while clicking and dragging on it. With Smart Guides enabled, we see measurement info about where this new copy is going relative to its source. Another way to use Smart Guides is to select one layer, then hold down Command or Control on the keyboard while hovering over another layer. And this shows the distance between the two. If I move my mouse outside a layer while holding Command or Control, I'll see the distance from the canvas edge of the selected layer. Okay, that's an overview of using guides and snaps in Photoshop.